Hello, thank you so much for taking the time to read our article titled Examining How National Levels of Life Expectancy, Education, and in Income Influence Early Childhood Development, The Mediating Role of Nurturing Contexts. I am the article's first author. My name is Drew Rothenberg, and I'm a research scientist from Duke University, and I'm presenting on behalf of Mark Bornstein, Diane Putnick, and Jennifer Lansford, my co-authors. This article really delves into thinking about a major public health issue in our world today, which is that over 40% of children across the world are not quite meeting their developmental potential uh, before the age of five. And so this article tries to identify different protective factors that might promote child development for those kids. The article focuses on two types of protective factors. The first type of protective factors are protective factors at the national level. So things that uh, promote national development, like higher levels of national life expectancy, income, and education. The second set of protective factors that we're looking at to see if they influence early childhood development are things that happen at the family level. And these protective factors at the family level are identified in UNICEF and, and the WHO's uh, nurturing care framework. There are things like uh, early caregiving, setting up the early learning environment for success, uh, developing safe and secure uh, parenting practices and providing safety and security for kids, providing adequate nutrition, and promoting healthy home environments. So what we did in this study was we looked at UNICEF's multiple indicator cluster surveys, which are nationally representative surveys that in this study uh, were collected in 51 uh, nations that were identified as low and middle income nations uh, by UNICEF. And we looked at 150,000 families in those nations to see if those national levels of development and those nurturing care indicators might predict uh, it more advanced early childhood development. And what we found in this work was really interesting. First, we found that higher national levels of life expectancy were directly associated with more advanced childhood development. They directly predicted more advanced childhood development. We also found that higher national levels of education and income were indirectly associated with more advanced childhood development. So they predicted more advanced childhood development, but the way that they did so were through these early nurturing care indicators. So nations with uh, higher overall levels of education and income uh, promoted aspects of the nurturing care environment, such as reduced caregiver psychological aggression or physical violence, increased learning materials and wired appliances in the home environment, greater caregiver education, and greater child height for age. So nations with higher levels of education and income were more likely to have parents who were less physically and psychologically aggressive, had more learning materials and wired appliances in their homes, had greater education, and had children who were better nourished. And those indicators directly predicted more advanced early childhood development. We also found that greater caregiver cognitive caregiving practices promoted childhood development regardless of levels of national development. So regardless of national levels of life expectancy, education, and income. So our conclusions from this study were that inter intervening to promote early childhood development could occur at several different levels. You could promote national levels of development uh, by promoting life expectancy, uh, education, and income, but you could also intervene to promote caregiver education, appropriate discipline strategies, uh, cognitive caregiving practices, and promote family access to wired appliances, learning materials, and adequate nutrition as ways of making sure that higher national levels of development actually really do lead to more advanced childhood development. So the question becomes how we can we create uh, sort of wraparound low-cost intervention services worldwide that promote appropriate discipline strategies like avoiding corporal punishment and drawing appropriate boundaries, that promote cognitive caregiving practices like reading to one's child, and that promote family uh, access to wired appliances, learning materials, and adequate nutrition. Thanks so much for listening, and I'm excited for you to be able to read the article.